Online Quiz Part 2 How to Set Up a Quiz Activity To efficiently create and facilitate an online quiz, we recommend that you follow this three-part procedure. This video focuses on Part 2, which is setting up a quiz activity. Once you're done building a question bank, you're now ready to set up a quiz activity. Setting up a quiz activity is just like adding any resource or activity to your course page. It starts with visiting your course page and ensuring that you are in edit mode. So again, don't forget, if you want to change the content of the topic sections, always start with clicking Turn on Editing. Again, if you're using tiles format, it may help to click Expand All so you can easily see the content of the course page. Our goal in this video is to add a new activity or a quiz activity under Module 1. To add an activity or a quiz activity, just click Add an Activity or Resource under the topic section where you would like to add the quiz. Then choose Quiz and click Add. Start with typing the name of the quiz activity, followed by the details or the description of the quiz activity. Make sure that all important details are included in the description. The description should have uh, the time limit, guidelines, tips, or even the materials that your students must prepare for the quiz activity. Next, we have timing. Under timing, you can set the start date and the closing date of the quiz. If you don't set the open date of the quiz, the students will be able to access the quiz immediately after saving this quiz activity. While if you don't set a closing date, the students will be able to access it indefinitely. Next is time limit. It is very important to set an appropriate time limit for a quiz activity. Time limit is one of the security features that you can add to your quiz activity. It makes uh, cheating or leakage more difficult. You know, the, the, the element of time pressure make it, makes cheating or leakage uh, more difficult. The next part is when time expires. This feature uh, lets you select what will happen if the student was disconnected from the internet and failed to return to the quiz activity before the time limit expires. By default, uh, open attempts are submitted automatically, meaning that their responses will be submitted automatically. There are other options which include there is a grace period for submitting, but no more answers, no more questions can be answered. And lastly, there is attempts must be submitted before time expires or they are not counted. So, in general, I typically use open attempts are submitted automatically because it's less pressure to the student. So, if they got disconnected, their attempts will be submitted automatically. If you chose the, the grace period option, then you can set the grace period in the next setting. Next, you have grade. Under grade, uh, you can select or allow multiple attempts for your quiz. So, in online classes, it's typical uh, for teachers to design quizzes that allows multiple attempts. If you chose to allow multiple attempts, then you must set how to summarize the grade. So there are several options. Are you going to select the highest grade, the average grade, or just the first attempt or the last attempt? For this quiz, I will choose one attempt only. Next is layout. 
On the layout, you can set the number of questions that will be displayed per page. In general, it is better to have fewer questions per page because it makes capturing questions more difficult. That is, it makes, um, it, it makes it more difficult for students to take a screenshot of many questions per page. So that's the reason why um, we would like to set fewer questions per page. So typically, I recommend uh, setting one question per page so that uh, uh, the student only focuses on a single question. No, every page. Next part is question behavior. So under question behavior, you had the option to shuffle within questions. That means shuffling certain elements of the question. Uh, it is always recommended to shuffle elements like the choices in a multiple choice question. So choose yes for this op for this field. Again, what we're shuffling here are the elements within the question not this question themselves. The next part is how questions behave. In general, there are two common question behavior. Uh, these are deferred feedback and adoptive mode. Deferred feedback, the student must complete the quiz before the student can get a feedback. Adaptive mode, the student will get a feedback or may get a feedback right after answering a question. If a student gave the wrong answer, the student may re-answer the question for a partial point. So this is an example of the quiz using deferred feedback. So you see here that um, the quiz has to be answered completely and must be submitted before the deadline. And it's only after submitting the quiz that the student gets a feedback. On the other hand, the other common mode is adaptive mode. Here you will see that the student can check the response right after answering a question and the student may re-answer the item if the student gave the incorrect answer but uh, the student will get lower marks on his or her second third and so on attempt for that particular item so for this example the penalty is 33 percent so those are the difference between the deferred mode and the adaptive mode so in general i typically use deferred feedback but if it's a formative assessment it's maybe good to use adaptive mode. Next, review options. So this part sets what the students see during and or after taking the quiz. So this is very important. You have to choose the right settings carefully to avoid leakage. Okay, so uh, by default, they will only see the marks, meaning the grades and the overall feedback. So this means students will not be able to review back their attempt will not see the right answer right after the quiz, etc. Uh, that way, you can prevent leakage. Okay. Allowing students to review attempt means they will be able to review the questions and their answers. So they will be able to see the exact content of the quiz again. So, if, so it depends on you if you will allow that. Okay, and it's not automatic that the right answers will be given. You have to check right answer if you want to show the right answer to the students. So it depends on your goal or purpose of creating this quiz activity. So if it's a formative assessment, then you may want to give the right answer. Okay, so uh, but definitely you should not allow learners to review attempt while the quiz is still open or immediately after the attempt. No, because if learners are not expected to take the quiz at the same time, then some of them will be taking it earlier and they may intentionally or accidentally share the content of the quiz to those students who have not taken the quiz yet. So um, it is recommended that you maintain the settings for uh, the second and the third column, which is immediately after the attempt and later while the quiz is still open. Next is appearance. So do you want to show the user's picture in the quiz attempt? So I typically choose um, yes, you know, so either a small image or a large image uh, because this will allow you to associate the attempt with a face. It allows you to recognize your learner somehow even if you're not seeing them face to face. 
So there you go. So yeah, it's a tip. You know? So require students to have a profile picture. Next part is extra restrictions and attempts. So if you want to add more security features on your uh, quiz, then uh, use this extra restrictions, which includes requiring a password. So uh, which, which means they will not be able to access the quiz without a password. Requiring network access, this means limiting access to quiz to certain IP addresses that say they have to uh, use Dillnet to access this quiz. So that's possible in a you know, limit the access to the quiz uh, via network address. Um, what else? So you, have, you can enforce delay between first and second attempts. So in uh, certain certain uh, educators um, uh, practice say one week delay or 24 hours delay between uh, multiple attempts you know, so that they will not simply memorize the quiz on their second or third attempt and uh, there's also an option to require student cognizance of plagiarism policy this is just like a pop-up message that uh, requires the students to promise that uh, their attempt is their their attempt you know, is is uh, really their attempt and not someone else's attempt. So it is advisable to choose must be acknowledged before starting an attempt. If you click show more, there are additional features uh, which include uh, browser security. So currently the default is none. But there's an option to require the use of safe exam browser. So what is a safe exam browser? Um, so a safe exam browser is an open source software. It's free and it is a browser designed to carry out electronic assessments safely and it works perfectly for Moodle sites like Vlet. So what it, pra it, what it does is um, it, it prevents students from taking screenshots, uh, transferring to a different window or different tab within the browser while taking the quiz. If you require Safe Exam Browser, then the student must install the Safe Exam Browser in his or her desktop. So the disadvantage is the student will not be able to take the quiz in a mobile phone because um, SEB Safe Exam Browser is for desktop. And uh, they will not be able to access the quiz if they're going to use an ordinary browser. Okay, so uh, that's the implication of that browser security feature. So it depends on your purpose. You know, if it's needed to uh, have extra security, then use this feature. And uh, lastly, don't forget to click save. Uh, so in here, we're done. We've just created a quiz one under module one that's the end of the video demonstration for questions and clarifications open a ticket at ilc Tilman help desk visit helpdesk.ilc.upd.edu.ph upgrade to interactive